Let's start with the water-soluble vitamins. Uh, vitamin C. I think we've all heard of that one. Vitamin C actually exists in two different active forms. And we see that down here. There's the reduced form and the oxidized form. Um, most, most species can synthesize vitamin C. Humans cannot. We need to get it from our diet. So we get lumped into this group with monkeys, apes, and strangely enough, guinea pigs. Who knew? Guinea pigs cannot make their own vitamin C. They also need to eat it. So that's interesting. Um, a weak, it's a weak acid. Um, and you may look at this structure and say, that doesn't look like an acid. And it doesn't look like an acid. But because we have this hydroxyl group attached to an unsaturated carbon, it, this functions as a weak acid. Let me get my pen working here. Come on. The iPad still thinks it's on spring break. So this double bond here, if that was an O, does that look like an acid? This carbon double bonded with an oxygen and the OH over here. That would be a carboxylic acid group, wouldn't it? So there is not an oxygen here, but because there's the double bond, what? Because there's that double bond, this hydrogen is slightly acidic. So it does act as a weak acid, um, hence the name ascorbic acid. The two major functions are that it is a co-substrate in collagen formation, so collagen is important, and it also acts as a specific and a general antioxidant, and that's where we see these oxidized and reduced forms. Remember, an antioxidant protects other compounds from being oxidized. Basically, it sacrifices itself. So it does this in a specific way, but also in a general way.